Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to the Foresight Sports GC3 video. So um, I've had the GC3 now for about a week or so and have been capturing some information on it. Now I'm a GC Quad user. So it's quite interesting for me to see what the differences are between GC3 and GC Quad. Um, now GC Quad is a completely different piece of kit to GC3. I, I won't mention the cost. Okay, there's a massive cost difference between GC Quad and GC3. GC3 is aimed very much so at the home market rather than GC Quad um, being full quadroscopic camera, full head data, all that lot is basically for club pros, uh, custom fitting and all that kind of idea. The very high echelon professional services idea. GC3 is very much so aimed towards the home user, which will possibly use something like this. This is uh, Foresight Sports Pro software. They do the FSX Play and also the FSX 2020. And when you buy a Foresight GC3, you get the software with it. It is a packaged bundle of which then you can add and take away certain things at your leisure uh, for more, more immersive experience should you wish. So remember guys, down in the description below, there is a link to the Foresight Sports website where that will take you straight there for the most up-to-date pricing on anything we talk about today, be it the launch monitors, the software, nets for the garden, or a more professional sim in the box. So you get the FSX 2020, which is the other side of software, which I generally speaking use on all my YouTube videos. I will dabble with other things, but yeah. Uh, but then I believe you also get FSX Pro license as well, if I'm wrong. I will have it up on the screen to see exactly what you get. Um, I will go on FSX Play in a little while anyway, because I just want to show you some things that um, obviously Foresight Sports software is very, very good at. Um, and with obviously GC3 here. So a, a quick lesson going back in time to understand where we have come from to get to GC3. First of all, you had GC2. There was no, technically there was no GC1. GC1, there was a GC100 but that would think it was a cooperation between Nike and something or other, and effectively, it was one of those little gray GC2s. It's not actually a GC2, and it's not even supported by Foresight, so those ones on eBay, just be aware, they're not GC2s. Anyway, so yeah, GC2. It's the gold standard when it comes to understanding ball algorithms, flight data from a camera-based system. Um, then you had HMT. The little uh, attachment add-on thing that had an arm that you had to bolt on underneath the GC2 then to hold on to the HMT unit with those two cameras gave you all the head data that you now all see in GC Quad as a standard. Now GC Quad does come with ball data and quad uh, um, club head data as an attachment from firmware so you can opt to buy a GC Quad with ball data but personally I'm not really getting the fact that if you're going to buy a quad why would you not have it as yeah just don't make no sense if you're going to put all that money into a gc quad why would you not have club data especially now you can get a gc3 with partial club data for a package which is decidedly cheaper now i'm not going to go into the cost okay i'll go slightly into the cost the quad is a lot of money um lots and if you were to put the add-ons that you have on quad and you put that up against the gc3 it can be like three times the cost of it so it is expensive a quad but then obviously a quad does everything but the gc3 does some important things so i'm gonna hit a few shots and we're gonna have a little chat about what this thing does i'm on the fsx pro range and it's a bit of fun because i've just put it on the camera because you can move around cameras and stuff like that but um yeah let's go have a little play with it and we've got some tiles on the bottom there and one thing i do like about the gc3 already is the uh, i'll tell i'll hit one and I'll, I'll show you what i mean so let's just give it a hit don't care where it goes uh, i'll talk about dots and stuff on the face in a little bit so that's gone now off it goes um Oh, that's quite close to the line as well. Um, what I like about this, it gives you speed, efficiency, path, and attack angle as its club data options. Um, that one was uh, 88.4 miles an hour, 0.05. Now it says on the data tile down the bottom there, club path 0.0, but what I do like about GC3, and you don't get that, with quad and the reason why you don't get it with quad on the display because the display on quad um, it's slightly bigger than GC3 but 
The GC3 hasn't got as much information when it comes to clubhead data to the display, so it can afford to spread out a little bit. And I like the fact that GC3 uh, gives to the 0 0.0, not 0.05 was my club. And it is quite addictive. Our last few shots that I've, I've been playing with it, and I, you kind of get a bit addictive to trying to hit the 0, 0, 0, 0.00 and all that lot. So the difference between, yes, a GC3 will only give you one dot data. What we call one dot data is because um, on golf clubs, um, I'm used to having four dot data on it. So you have three dots up the toe end and then one dot um, in the, well, I won't say middle, because I'm not going to talk about the fiducial placements. They're called fiducials, HMD dots. I'm not going to talk about the placements because I kind of disagree a little bit where Foresight say they should put them, but that's another video, another story. And if you want me to go into that one, by all means, I will do. But anyway, one dot in the middle gives you this information. Um, and it's quite good because of the fact that obviously if it's gone straight, of which it has, club path is zero, and it's 0.7 yards offline, as long as you have a fairly okay strike, yeah, face was straight as well. Now you haven't got strike data on here, which is a bit of a pain, obviously, because I'm used to having that with a full quad, but um, you'd argue, do you need it? Well, you, okay, you don't, because let's face it, if you were to do this at the range, let's just say you're aiming straight and you were to do this. Now that's gone 47 yards right. That is at the edge now the edge of the actual range. Um, my club path was 1.3 degrees in to out, out to the right. 1.28 actually. I love, I love this GC3, it's hilarious. Um, so 1.28 degrees from the inside, out to the right, 1.28. Um, it's clear that my face was open massively. Now, you don't need a 20 odd thousand pound quad to tell you that you've got a eight odd thousand pound uh, GC3 that tells you enough information that you can, yeah, determine what went wrong. Now, yes, you are gonna have the conversation about all oh, what happens if you have strike differences, gear effect and all that lot. That will happen majority with a driver and yes, you have a point but you really have to strike something distinctly poorly to get a tilt axis of 17.2 degrees out to the right. Um, yeah, you'd feel that anyway. So that's the difference. I mean, you, you don't have to know your poor strike, you can feel it. But um, yeah, it's given me all the information I need um, for, for me to practice and definitely for someone else to practice when it comes to their ability to work on their swing for sure. Not too bad, it's not perfectly struck, but pretty good. Um, 1.7, I'll wait for it to go up, 1.66. Um, across was my club path, uh, attack angle also it does, it gives you in 5.1 degrees over there, I'll just move the ball out of the way, um, and then it'll flick over. That's the only thing I found that when you're putting the ball in the way, it then goes to the ball screen and then I want it to flick over its tiles. 5.14 was my angle of attack, I love that. I, I, I actually now want Foresight to change the data on the quad to give much more precise. It's precise to the point 0.1. This is now precise to the point 0.01, which the quad will do. I mean, this is exactly the same capturing software and hardware. It's just obviously how it displays on the screen, but it's quite addictive anyway. So uh, one more shot and we can have a little play on um, FSX Play. One point three across, one point two eight. I can see it down there, and three point eight four. When it comes to the attack angle, um, offline three point two. So I I have every single bit of information that I need to really on here to get better, to understand what I'm doing in my own delivery. And this obviously is a portable object. It's not like a GC Hawk that you have strapped to the ceiling. It is like a quad, it is like a GC2. You can take this and take it to the range. Right, let's go flick over to FSX Play. Let's have a little look at the software on there. Um, now, FSX Play is generally speaking a paid for upgrade. 
um, it, but within reason, it's exactly the same as FSX 2020 that you get when you come to purchase in this as a standard. Um, but FSX Plate has got a different graphics engine to make things look a little bit better and stuff like that. But let's have a quick look on FSX Play and um, yeah, have a little go when it comes to playing on the GC3. FSX Play booted up. I've had a go, it is all working, so we are ready to um, have a hit. Now, um, I'm not gonna play many holes, or if anything, I just to give you a demonstration. So FSX Play is a potentially 4K graphics engine. FSX 2020 will give 4K as well, but it's not quite, it doesn't look as uh, appealing and nice. Now, so depending on what your setup is, you can have a 4K, obviously, uh, projector and a 4K um, screen as well. Obviously, you've got to have a pretty meaty PC uh, to be able to uh, do 4K. Now, that's the only struggle that I'm having at the moment. Um, I need a bigger graphics card. If I'm going to be playing full on full graphics, 4K golf. Now, the great thing with golf is obviously when it comes to this is that this isn't just standalone. You don't have to sit in here and just hit shots or sit outside and do anything when it comes to net because yes, Foresight do make sims in boxes or sim in a box, their net series and stuff like that. So you can if you want to, um, rather than just putting a sheet out in the garden and having a go, uh, which you can do, obviously it's nice and cheap. You can obviously use these professional uh, pre-built systems which allow you to have these things in the garden and stuff like that. Now, um, you've got that net series to do that, but then sim, professional sim side to give you that more of a professional look, you get a proper hitting mat and all that lot. Yeah, it depends on what space you're gonna put it in basically. But um, let's go give this one a little hit anyway. Um, and let's go see how we get on. Well, we, are, we are at colonial hole number one. Oh, I've faded it. Have I faded it enough? Round the corner. Go on, go a bit more, go a bit more. Well, oh, just, there we go. So, um, there you go, that's an idea. The, because the GC3 is a, uh, the, the cheaper version of obviously a quad, um, to, to get this, you don't then have to spend an inordinate amount of money to do it. Now, this is still obviously an expensive setup. Um, but depending on what you're looking for, uh, you can convert your garage and again, you can just do this outside. You can play tournament, you can play um, online games with other players around the world. It's much more of a immersive experience than literally just smacking balls away in your back garden, practicing your swing. Um, so we have now, how far have we got? 100 and, uh, 233 yards. Oh, shall I get the three wood out and get it cut? Oh, let's go for it. This could go horribly wrong. We're gonna go for a 233 yard cut. So what I've noticed so far is I've got a little, like a divot mat, a pre-made divot mat, which basically, yeah, allows the um, floor to give if I was to hit it fat or something like that. So a bit more realistic. Now I've noticed from using quad to GC3, the GC3 has got a slightly smaller hitting window. So people that use GC2, as soon as they went from GC2 to GC quad, there was a wow, look at the size of that hitting window because with GC2, there was quite a smallish hitting window. I would say the GC3 window size of, of the placement where you can put the ball is in between the size of GC2 and a GC quad. So, right, okay, let's go into a green, 233 yards, two feet up, little baby fade it's gonna need because I don't want to hit those trees. So we'll set up for a little fade and see how we get on. Oh, come on, come on, get over the bunker, over the bunker. Oh, ho, 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 ho. there we go. Oh, I was getting worried there for a second. Um, so when it comes to on the green, I mean, I'm not really gonna do So, okay, when it comes to a green for Eagle, okay, yeah. Um, it is very much so um, putting, you have to get used to on a simulator. That's one thing I'm gonna say. So you can putt on, uh, on GC3 as you would do on any normal Foresight launch monitor. Yes, when it comes to quad, you have got that putting side where you've got the putting launch monitor side, which again is an add-on, um, but it gives you launch monitor characteristic stuff for putting. GC3, you haven't got that because I remember you've got triscopic three cameras. Um, let's just do it with a three wood. Pretty certain you're not supposed to be putting with a three wood. We have 25 feet down five inches it is as you can see there the little dashes are moving to the right which means left to right downhiller um and then you can if you want to on the settings you can go auto putts if you don't want to be bothered about putting and generally speaking 
yeah, sim putting is, uh, you have to get used to it. But let's just go and hit a 25 foot putt with a three wood. Um, yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Way too hit hard. Gosh, so that little, <laughs> don't putt with a three wood. Um, as you can see, that little round circle, um, that is your gimme line. So if you get it within there, you can obviously set that and stuff, how big you want that. But let's just do, what is this, 10 feet, doesn't matter. Hiss it like, there we go. Oh, need to make sure that I don't move the golf ball just before I hit it. In the window, it's in the window. Little 10 feet, let's see if we can put it in with a three wood. There we go. So anyway, got a birdie with a three wood, daft idea. That's the whole idea of, of FSX play. And we go into the next hole and stuff like that. And so remember, yes, you do this on tournament play. Um, it's a bit of fun, of course it is like that. And you get, uh, when it comes to the software, you get uh, like closer to the hole, longest drive, and it's leagues and it is quite immersive and quite fun. Now, yes. Now, when it comes to GC3, as all Foresight stuff, well, apart from the Hawk, although I'm not quite sure, comment below if I am wrong. They've been kind of hacked. I don't want to use the word hacked, but effectively kind of is. GC2 first started with their Bluetooth stream, and then you had other third-party software made use of that Bluetooth stream so they, they could actually physically use their software with a launch monitor yeah to play golf and then of course you've got the golf club you've got gs pro now gs pro version 2 and they all had ways of being able to play that software using these kind of launch monitors and remember these are the gold standard when it comes to understanding ball dynamics uh, the, you have the argument between TrackMan and Quad and all this lot and then the differences between those technologies outdoors to indoors but indoors especially these things rule they are exceptionally good so having that versatility to use these launch monitors not just on FSX and FSX play but on the likes of the Golf Club and GS Pro, GS Pro V2 now, which has just come out, um, is quite a handy thing, because obviously that's got an environment and has got a community there as well. So um, guys, remember this is portable. This doesn't have to stay into a room like this or in your garage or anything else like that. It goes to the range. It can go in the golf course. I've got my tour bag over here and I have put my quad in a tour bag and taken it out with me. Now, these batteries last five to seven hours, depending obviously on its state of charge and the age of the battery but let's face it even if it stays for five hours as the years go on within reason if your if your round of golf is lasting more than five hours that is a bit of a marathon um, but you can put that in your bag and you don't then have to worry about turning it off you can literally just keep it in there bring it out pop it down give it a hit they do come with sticks they come with alignment sticks and all bits and pieces like that if you really want to get anal into exact data um, i wouldn't really be worrying about too much when you come to the golf course about your uh, club paths and your attack angles and your speed of your head and your efficiency of this I wouldn't worry about that because that will need you to align it to a target and blood and all that lot but for ball data it is a very 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 good there's plenty of occasions where you can quite easily put this thing down there on an afternoon when it's not that well, busy it's quite quiet and play to your heart's content and obviously you've got the useful indoor, you've got the online side of things, the community of different golf software that you can use for this. There's many, many, many different things that you can use GC3 for, not just making your golf better, but having a load of fun doing it. So anyway, comment below, what do you think of the GC3 when it comes to its place within the market? Obviously there are a lot of launch monitors out there. Everyone is trying to like claw at the people that are trying to get into this kind of idea when it comes to buying launch monitors. So yeah, comment below. Um, while you're down there, there's a little like button. If you click that one, that'd be great because YouTube loves it and so do I. Next to it is a red subscribe button, it's free. I like that. If you click that subscribe button, that allows me to make more content like this. And also while you're down there, there's a little bell icon. If you can click that one, that'll let you know next time I upload another video. So I hope you're well, and we'll see you again soon.